Hey guys, what's up? It's Heidi. So today, um, last night I went on my iTunes like purchase history and I was looking at all the shit that I used to listen to back in 2012 and 2013 and I was like, wow, I was so gross and annoying. And I started thinking of all the things, all the memes. So I wanted to make a video talking about my embarrassing, cringy, annoying, disgusting, revolting childhood stories and or like memories I guess we should say so let's go ahead and start with something from I think the youngest age on this list which was about third grade so there was this boy who shall remain nameless let's call him Roger Roger I loved Roger this was at the time when I started watching Naked Brothers Band and there were so many like love triangles and shit I just I was just boy crazy from day one and this is when I really realized I was really boy crazy so there was this boy named Roger and he basically was like a skater boy he had like long hair like dirty blonde like so classic that was my type when I was a kid I used to love this boy named Roger and I just had this distinct memory of literally chasing him around like the playground like the blacktop where there was like the tetherball and the four square courts and the basketball courts I just remember distinctly chasing this boy around like he was probably like, ew this bitch is so annoying like what the fuck but I literally chased him like full on I remember sprinting after him I was like Roger come back here and at this time I was probably wearing like plaid Bermuda shorts, maybe like a Naked Brothers Band shirt. Um, I'll try to insert a photo here if I can find one. I was probably wearing something of the like, really gross and disgusting, and I think I had bangs and like little purple glasses. I was, I was a sight to see. I was pretty hot back in that day, so. I just remember chasing this boy Roger when I was in the third grade, and third grade is not like an age that you do that kind of stuff that's more of like kindergarten like you're being silly you like kiss a boy or whatever but I was in the third grade which you're like I think eight or nine at that time so you're like really actually grown up like chasing boys is not a thing in the third grade anymore you know what I'm saying it's time to be more mature and I don't think I reached that maturity um hump till about fifth grade so so this story goes back a little bit further I think I was about four or five and I, so my parents got divorced and then I moved in with my stepdad, my new stepdad and my mom when I was four. And my stepdad lived above this like pet store, like he owned a pet store and there were like birds and we had a monkey and like all these animals like guinea pigs and snakes and shit. And so I've been living there for a while, whatever. And I remember we ordered or he the workers ordered this like baby alligator I think and so in this house it was like a big house but it was like small so the house was upstairs and in the bottom there was like a computer store a pet store there was a big storage area we called it the zoo but it was just this big room with like carpet and we used to play in there it was honestly kind of unsafe there was like a lot of like tools and shit in there and then in this back room there was a bunch of extra tanks and like water and a water heater and all that kind of stuff where they kept like fish or like storage for fish. I don't know if there were actually fish back there all the time. But there were rumors about getting this little baby alligator. I think this is how the story went. I was like four or five, so I don't really remember it that well. But so we got this baby alligator. It was like this big. It was like an actual alligator, like a baby animal. It had little scales. It was cute. Big eyes, whatever. And so I don't really remember if we like lost the alligator. Well, obviously we lost the alligator because I'm about to explain that. But I don't know if we lost it or like something, it just like got out of the cage or whatever. We kept it in this big tin thing and obviously that little bitch just like crawled out of there. There's no other ex explanation except for it got lost, like we just let it go. Anyway, so we had this babysitter. I think she was like a family friend or some shit, but we had this babysitter. And I remember we had all these like play dress up vests, like orange construction vests. And she was like, oh my god, let's play alligator hunting since you like lost your alligator. And we were like, haha, like just pretend like gonna play alligator hunting as if we're actually going to find the alligator. So we like went downstairs in the zoo, which was the storage area, and we were just looking around and shit, like pretending with flashlights. We weren't actually looking for the alligator, we were just playing pretend alligator hunter 
all the fucking sudden we go in this back room with all the tanks and the fish and shit and this baby alligator is literally in there we don't know how long it was lost i don't remember it was so long ago maybe we lost it for like a few weeks a few days a month i don't know the duration of the time that we lost the alligator but we literally went back there and i remember my babysitter being like oh my god like we literally found this alligator like it was just it was there and we're like mom we like found the fucking alligator playing alligator hunter but we literally found the alligator so that was pretty crazy honestly that was one of my craziest experiences we were just these kids playing alligator hunter and we found the actual baby alligator don't know what happened to that little guy after then i don't know if we kept it or like gave it away or like sold it back to the people or some shit but yeah that's the story of me being an alligator hunter so okay so back to like my mom and shit my stepdad so my mom used to live in Hawaii when I, I think it was like seventh, seventh, sixth and seventh grade, I believe. So she lived in Hawaii. There was this beach um, from her house. You could walk like 15 minutes. She was on like the coast coast, like right on the edge of their house. So you could like walk across the road, across the sand, and there was the beach. And you could walk down the beach like 20 minutes and you would hit all the resorts and the hotels. And there was like a little small beach area that had like a, sh a store and a shop and it, had, it was like a cove kind of. It was a really popular tourist spot. It was always busy. People like boogie boarding and shit. And it was called Brennicky's. And my sisters at the time were older than me and they were super badass and they had all these beach friends because they lived there at the time but I didn't. I just visited my mom there in the summers. And they all like would hang out with their beach friends and go to beach parties and like smoke weed but I was too scared to do that because I was like 12. So I was kind of lame and they'd be like, Heidi, like come out, let's go ride the set or whatever. So like basically these giant fucking waves in Hawaii, they were huge sets, like big ass. And they would like, so here's the beach, the sets would like, here's the shore, the sets were like way back here, like pretty far. And they were these giant waves, giant. And what they would do basically is just like surf the weight, like with their bodies, like you just like swim under it or whatever. You just swim with the sets. It's pretty fucking dangerous. Now thinking about it, I'm like, oh, I totally could have drowned, which is what I almost did. So basically, um, all I remember is this giant set came, like a huge, massive grandpa wave. And I just like, you're supposed to go under it and like, like go under it so it doesn't hit you if you go right into the set you're gonna tumble and get hurt and that's what happened to me I just you know hit that set right in the right in the belly and I um I did some tumbling I definitely got some sand in my mouth um got some sand in my eyes I definitely was kind of dangerous but um so yeah this old guy 40 50 maybe like picked me up and I was like oh <gasps> like dying and he picked me up and had to like carry me back to shore and I was like you guys you guys stay out there I'm fine I'm just gonna walk back to the house and I just remember like walking back and I was like, <gasps> like still in shock and my cool ass sisters probably just like stayed there with their beachy friends and I just went back and probably like watched Chopped or something to my mom's house so that's the story of how I almost died at the beach Ooh, okay so um, my mom, around the time she lived in Hawaii, she also lived in Florida, which was before. Sorry, this time, this timeline is all out of whack. But, uh, basically, when my mom lived in Florida, which was before Hawaii time, I was, like, really young. I was, like, 10. Basically, at this time, I couldn't go out by myself. I could only stay at home and play with my little sister and my little brother, who were a lot younger than me at the time. So, I always just played on my mom's computer. And I would play, like, Petville, Farmville. You remember all those Facebook games and shit? There was this one website that my sisters and I always played on, and it was called Star Doll, right? Star Doll. You, like, had a house. You, like... It was, like, realistic. Like, the girls were really pretty. Your little dolls, your character. And you would, like, dress them up and put makeup on them and do their hair and, like, buy clothes, like, with big money on the game and shit. And I remember when they started doing these, like, chat rooms. You would go in a chat room, you go in, like, the lobby, and you, like, pick a chat room to go in, and the title would be, like, um, Screamo fans or, like, iCarly fans. Like, you would go in these chat rooms based on, like, your interests and shit. It was, like, regular chat rooms. And I, <laughs> I don't know if I was just, like, curious or I... All of a sudden, I just remember, like, I started going in these chat rooms, and it would, the title would be, like, lesbians. <laughs> and 
I would just go in these chat rooms and I remember like sitting in the corner of my mom's house and I like didn't want anyone to look at what I was doing because I was in like lesbian chat rooms like and I'm not lesbian like I wasn't lesbian I would just go in these chat rooms and just like I was curious you know we've all been there we've all been little kids and like curious about that kind of shit so I just remember going in these chat rooms and they would talk about like like doing like sexy things like scissoring and shit but I didn't know that I was like 10 and I was like wow this is like crazy they're like making out but they weren't making out like they would just type with an asterisk like makes out and I would be like oh my god like this is so sexual I didn't know ah uh, who let me do that and now I remember thinking back why I would always sit in this one corner of my mom's house because if anyone saw me being in a lesbian chat room when I was 10 I would be in trouble it was like sex like they talked about sex in there so here's another little story little situation um in like the seventh grade the thing was to make these music videos with this app called video star if i can find any of these videos on my computer i'll insert them sometime during this story but uh my friends and i used to make these videos and like iMovie was like pretty cool. I didn't start using iMovie until like a few, probably like a year after, but Video Star. You like picked a song, you could like speed it up or slow it down, and you would just do these like video clip motions and you would put them in order and they all had really cool effects on them and shit. And I just was obsessed with making these. And we would make them with my friends, which I'll probably put like a little clip here. So yeah, pretty embarrassing. Um, so I used to make those with my friends all the time, and then I started making them by myself. I don't know if I'm gonna find one of those, but uh, I used to make them by myself too. I bet I'm gonna find one, so let's go and put it here. Don't you run now. Um, I just used to make those video star videos all the time literally so cringy and um, Yeah, so this is kind of a segue into my uh, My dubstep oh face my <laughs> So um, I used to be obsessed literally obsessed with like Skrillex in like 2012 2013 2012 2013 was like the era that I loved Skrillex. I was like diehard XD sunny um, I loved flux pavilion. I loved like all those Really classic dubstep people, right? Um, Zed. Oh, I loved Zed Avicii like all that kind of shit. I just loved it. So I <laughs> okay, so around this same time, this is the most embarrassing story out of this whole thing. Around the same time, my friends and I were going to Worlds of Fun all the time. And where I live, Worlds of Fun is like 45 minutes away. It's like an amusement park, roller coasters, all that kind of shit. It's actually really fun, but I just burnt myself out going all the time. We would pay $100 and get these like gold passes and you can go whenever you want. As long as you want, you get like a discount on food and shit. It's just like a season pass to an amusement park. And my friends and I, I had like a group of like five-ish girlies and we would go all the fucking time. But it sucked because we couldn't drive at that time. So we would have to get like, hey, your dad's going to pick us up and your mom's going to take us home. Like we just like had to find parents to pick us up and take us there and take us home and da da da. So we used to go there, whatever. And it was a big deal. Worlds of Fun was like the shit. Anyways, so there's this roller coaster there called the Patriot. It's like... I think it's the only one where you go like upside down. It's not like a regular car roller coaster, you're like feet and angle or whatever. I don't know how I thought of this idea. I literally don't know. But at the time, I was in my Skrillex phase. I don't know how this came to mind, but I think, okay, so it's called Rock and Roll Take You to the Mountain by Skrillex. And the Patriot, I think. I just had my iPod with me that day, and it's a little iPod um, Nano, but it has a screen on it. It's like the size of a shuffle, but it has a screen on it, and it has a clip. And the root of this idea will never, I will never know what it was, but I decided to, <laughs> I decided to clip my little iPod, like, inside my fucking shirt in my little sports bra and I put the headphones in my ears and I would like hide them when the roller coaster people were coming by to like push you in the car I'd like put my hair down and cover the headphones and I decided I 
I'm gonna play this song, Rock and Roll by Skrillex, to the beat of the roller coaster. So, I just timed it right, where you're going up the steep incline, and I timed it the way that when I would click, I would like double tap the little headphone thing, and the song would start playing. I had it set to a certain time at the bass drop. Every time I got to the top of the roller coaster and I would play it as soon as you were going down the roller coaster So it would literally play the song to the beat of the roller coaster like it was disgusting And I did it every time it was like falling asleep with the TV on like once you do it one time and you get used to it You can't stop doing it. So I remember this part of the song if you know the song go ahead and like google it or some shit And you'll hear it. There's a part of the song where it like slows down and like speeds back up and it went to the roller coaster that shit was just fate that just happened that way but basically i would literally listen to skrillex on a roller coaster every time i rode it and like getting off the ride and we would ride it again over and over and over i would have to like put the headphone in my ear and like time it right to where i could click play and it would like play at the right time so why did i do that i don't even remember what it's like to ride that ride without listening to that fucking song like it is so embarrassing that just displays 2012 me so well all right so for my last story um this is pretty fucking funny this was my most recent embarrassing story that i could think of this was sophomore year i think yeah sophomore year and i was 15 sophomore year and it was like the beginning it was like the first semester and I was like oh like I want a job someone told me that you could work at Party City when you're 15 so I applied online did all the shit and they called me back for an interview so I went into Party City I was like 15 my dad had to drive me in the Civic like I couldn't drive yet I was still 15 so I went to Party City with this her uh, I'll never forget her name her name was Linda so I did this interview I was like yes I nailed it and I was 15 Keep this in mind, I was 15 and they knew that. I put 15 on my application, 15 on all my papers, I was 15, I said that. You say your age in an application, like in an interview, you're just, you know, they know how old you are, right? And whatever, before I even left, they were like, you got the job, girl, like we need people to work, you're seasonal, you're gonna work the Halloween costume wall, like you got the job, you start, da da da, here's your hours, da da da, whatever. So I was like, fuck yeah, I went outside, I was like, dad, I got the interview, like I got the job, like yay! So, I worked there, for about two and a half weeks it didn't last very long and during these weeks I was working till like 10 at night but you can't work past 9 or you can't work past 7 actually until you're 16 I think is the law here in Kansas but uh I was working till like 10 on weeknights and my dad would drive me pick me up take me to my job every night whatever and I would work the Halloween costume wall and I had a little walkie. You know when you go to Party City and you would like want to get a Halloween costume? You like go up to the wall and you pick it out and we go to the back and get it for you. So I had a little orange vest. Like I had all, I was all decked out. Like I was like working at Party City. I was like, yeah, everyone, I have a job. Like I work at Party City. So one day I was working the Halloween costume wall being like, can we get an Elsa to the front Elsa costume? And uh, all of a sudden I heard on my walkie, it was Linda. Hey, will you come to the office, please? I'm like, okay, fuck. Like, am I in trouble? I'm sure it's fine. So I go back there. She sits me down. My manager goes, You're 15? Yes! I was like, Yeah, I'm 15. Like, I told you when I started working here, like, you guys hire 15. She goes, No, we don't. You have to be 16 to work here, and you've been working past 7 on school nights. I was literally speechless. I was like, um, I've been working here for two and a half weeks. You hired me and I said I was 15. It says it on my application. Like I gave you all my social security and shit. Like I'm 15. And she was like, well, uh, you have to be 16 to work here. So we're going to have to let you go. I was about to go out there on the wall, finish my shift and leave and never come back. Right. And she goes, no, no, no. You have to leave right now. Like you're illegally working here. So, I had to call my dad, have him come pick me up in the middle of my shift, and she goes, Hand in your orange vest. I literally had to hand in my orange vest, like, it was like some serious shit. Gave her my name tag, I was just sitting in the break room, and there was this kid next to me, and he was like, you on break? I was like, no, I'm actually fired. <laughs> uh, so, my dad came to get me, and I never came back to Party City. So, yeah. 
that's my story of uh, getting fired from Party City. So, anyways, you guys, I hope you enjoyed these stories. Um, I had a great time reliving my past. Um, I was so annoying. I hope you enjoyed the pics. So, if you guys liked that video, if you guys liked those embarrassing stories, go ahead and give this a thumbs up. If it made you chuckle, if this reminded you of your childhood at all, which it probably didn't because I was so weird and not normal like other kids. But anyways, I hope you guys liked this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you next time. Bye!